Namaste, hola, good evening, and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you who's watching us live. My name is Ruben Lobo, and on behalf of Team Dentist Channel dot online, I warmly invite you to the fifth day of the biggest virtual implantology event of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you all have been doing well and you're keeping safe. A big thank you to everyone who's joined us from various parts of the globe, for everyone who's joined us from the Middle East, from Europe, etc. Once again, namaste and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special speaker amongst us for this session. Most of you all would be knowing him, the person who is the digital smile design guy. So for the ones who don't know him, here's a short introduction about our speaker, Dr. Lukin de Adeloa. Dr. Lukin was born in Caracas, Venezuela. Dr. Lukin obtained his Doctor of Dental Surgery de degree from the Universidad Central de Venezuela. After completing his bachelor's degree, he became an associate professor at the chair of the dental aesthetics of this university. During that time, he was elected as a secretary of the Metropolitan Board of Dentistry. After moving from Caracas to Madrid, he completed his specialty and obtained a master's degree in prosthesis, implant prosthesis and dental aesthetics from the Universidad Europa de Madrid. Dr. Arbeloa has developed interest in this field of smile design due to his experience in several advanced trainings in this discipline he started his steps in the digital smile design company, that is DSD. As a smile designer in DSD planning center, since its inception, where half of his time was spent designing smiles in 3D and the rest of the time in private practice. After five years, he became an important member of the DSD company as the DSD education strategy director, dedicated to giving training around the world on the DSD concept and Dr. Christian Coachman's, the DSD founder's right hand in the area of education. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you, Dr. Lucan de Arbeloa Life. Introduction, can you hear me? Yes, now, thank you for this awesome introduction. I know we said that I love the way that you introduce the speakers. Make me feel was very, very important, very special, right? And yes, this time we're going to talk about uh, DSD, but this case is gonna be more related to the implantology. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Ruben, can you see my screen now? Just confirm if you can see it. Perfect, so please go ahead. Okay, so this time we're going to talk about the uh, digital smile design and the evolution in the guided implantology. But first, I just want to put in context in the uh, digital smile workflow, usually we divide into parts, pre-case acceptance and post-case acceptance. So everything that we do to try to the patient accept the treatment is what we call the pre-case acceptance. And all the things that we do after the patient say, the patient say yes, it's what we call post-case acceptance. So in this case, we are talking uh, in, in uh, guided implantology, so that's mean that we are thinking in post-case acceptance. But we need to understand that when we talk about this, of course, to go to this part, the, all the previous part must to be done. So we need to focus very well, we need to understand very well that to go to that moment, to be in that moment of the performance of the treatment, we need to be very good at the previous steps. So all the pre-case acceptance need to be very good, need to be very good prepared. So the patient said yes. And after that, it's the moment when we are going to start to work as an implantologist in this case. So this is the full DSD workflow. Uh, I don't want to explain this in depth. I did in the, in the last webinar with you, Ruben. So I don't know if available, if someone wants to know more about this. Uh, this webinar is, is somewhere, <laughs> if, but in this case, we're going very focused in digital implantology. As you know, DSD, uh, maybe you think that DSD, digital smile design is only for veneers, it's only for just aesthetic cases, 
But the truth is that DSD now is everything. DSD covers implants, perio, ortho, restorative, is based on the diagnosis, is based on the marketing and predictability and a communication tool. So this is the wheel that uh, represent all the things that digital smile design can do now. Today, this is the part of the wheel that we're going to talk in these uh, 40, 45 minutes and is the implant dentistry. When I said guided implantology, maybe the first things that comes to your mind is one implant and one guide. So guided implantology, right? Something like this, one implant, what guide? Guided implantology. For me, this is not the most important part of guided implantology. For me, you know, as, uh, as Ruben introduced me, my background is prosthesis and aesthetics. So when we talk about guided implantology, the first things that come to my mind is the final prosthesis. So I need to think my final goal, my objective is a final prosthesis in the right position. And the implants is gonna be like a, the basis that is going to hold my restoration. So when I think in guided implantology, this is what comes to my mind. Implants, guides, and the prosthesis. Usually the normal way to use the guided implantology is like that, guided by the bone. So you ask to the patient or to the doctor ask for a CBCT scan, and then we start to analyze all the cut, we see the nerve, the thickness of the bone, and then we decide this is the perfect position for the implant. This is implant diet, guided implantology by the bone. This is the normal way, uh, more than 10 years uh, working on this, and it's completely under control. So this is how the uh, university teach us how to work. Usually they told us that we need to think in biology, in the structure, in the function, and then if it's possible, think in aesthetics. And it's completely different than the way that we are teaching and the way that we, th we must think now. The modern dentistry, we need to start always thinking in aesthetic first. And then we need to find a way, taking care of function, biology, and structure to get that wall or that final aesthetic situation that we want. That's why the aesthetic and the function is going to be the key part. And it's not only for us, it's a key part for the patients. When the patients come to our clinics or to your clinics, patients are not looking for implants. They are not going to your, to your clinic and say, doctor, can you please put me an implant here? They don't know what is an implant. Patients are not looking for veneers. Patients are not looking for braces. Patients are not looking for uh, perio treatment. They are looking for a solution. They come to the clinic asking for us to give them a solution, aesthetic and functional solution. And the implants, the ortho, the veneers are the tools that we are going to use to give to the patient the final solution that they are looking for. That's why we need to think in this way. That's what we call the reverse engineering. We need to think, or, or this means that we need to start from the end, from the finished part. That is building the house from the roof means. So if I have a patient, I need to start from the last part. What is the ideal, the perfect, ideal, functional and aesthetic design for my patient? Is this, we present to the patient, patient said yes, and then we go back and start to analyze how we can make this uh, treatment happens to get this final goal. So the two main difference in between the guided implantology and the guided implantology by the face. It's completely different. The first one is guided by the bone. You have enough bone, you place the implant, and then you continue with the prosthesis. That's the way that I was teaching in my master. I, was, I, I did a master in prosthesis and aesthetics, and I did a lot of uh, restoration over implants. And the way that I did the restoration was that the other master of implantology, they placed the implants and then I received the patient after the implant placement and I need to find a way to restore that part. 
The problem was that sometimes the implant wasn't in the real, in the best ideal position. Mm -hmm. And I need to find a way to put the crown in the right position, trying to play, to move, to correct. And it does not mean that my, uh, the implant only wasn't good. The thing is that the implant only was thinking in the best uh, biological thinking in bone and not thinking in the prosthesis. So that happened many times when you have the emergency of the implant in the middle of a papilla, or maybe you have the emergency in the vestibular area and it's not in the perfect ideal position. That's not because the implantology is not good. This is a problem, a lack of planning. So that's why we need to start always thinking in the prosthesis and then come to the implant. So we're going to go a little bit more deep on that. Uh, Ruben, if we have any question, don't hesitate, you can stop me, read the question and we can continue, you have no problem, okay? So this is the full complete DSD workflow. Everything starts with the uh, virtual experience, the pre-appointment, the pre-consultancy or website or marketing. And imagine that everything that we did, we did it perfectly and then we have a patient that is in the door of our clinic, he's getting insight and this is what's going to happen. First appointment. And this is the workflow that we need to use for all the cases. I don't care if the case is for implant, for ortho, for veneer, for perio. For me, all the initial workflows are exactly the same. We need to start in this process. First appointment is the patient digitalization. It's the moment when we are going to talk all the images, it's the moment when we're going to scan the patient, record videos. In my lecture, I have many QR codes. So you have your smartphone, you can scan this QR code. In this case, this QR code takes you to the uh, DSD photo protocol. If you want to learn a little bit more, just place your phone in front of the QR and then this, this uh, image will link you to this uh, DSD photo protocol. Photo protocol, it's done. We have all the information, we have the CVCT, we have the photo, we have the STL, we have the videos, we have all the first interview, the patient told us what is what he's looking for, and is the moment to start the design. This moment is very important because for us is the number one part. And usually this is the second step in the traditional clinics. Normally you take impressions, you take decision and send to the lab. Please. Uh, design my case for two or three implants, or please make a wax up from six to six four veneers. And it's complete opposite. We need to start creating an ideal design. And after that, that we know where is my initial position, what is going to be my final position, then is when we're going to start to plan. So we need to make a chief in our mind of that part. First design and then plan. And when we are designing, always guided by the face. So I want to present you a case. This is a case that we did like, uh, I don't know, four years ago, or a little bit more. I don't remember exactly now. But the cases start always with a smile design. We take a photo, use the, in this case, we use the DSD app. We create a very nice smile design and present to the patient. Then the design is transformed the 2D in a 3D using a specialized software that can follow exactly my 2D design. I can make it in a 3D using the same tooth galleries, using the same natural textures. So it's gonna be completely connected. Now my design is done. And this is a part that is very important because everything that I show, that I present to my patients needs to be exactly the same in the whole treatment. I cannot show you a very cool Photoshop smile simulation and then my final outcome is different. So if I present you a 2D smile design, my result needs to be at least very, very similar. That is something that we can do now with the digital technology. My design is done. So now it's the moment to define the treatment. It's the moment to plan. How are you going to plan? I know the ideal position. For example, look at this case. Everything starts with the face, we create a 2D design, we create the 3D design, we place the uh, crown in this case in the ideal position. And just after that is when we place the implant. 
because if I know where the crown is going to be, I can put the implant in the right position. And then I'm going to analyze. I have enough bone or not. If I don't have, I have two options. Or I can do a grafting, a bone grafting, or I just move my implant, or I can use any device to angulate my emergency. So look at this. In this moment, you can have all that questions and then you create all your treatment plan. This is the moment that we recommend to share with all your team. It's the interdisciplinary moment to define this plan. So all your team needs to be on board, the implantology, the periodontic, the prosthesis, the lab, all together analyzing. This is the initial situation. This is my final situation. How can we make this happen? This is the all the interdisciplinary planning. And something that is very important in this step is that the implant planning, the implant position is just a simulation. This is not the final implant. This is not the final measurement. This is not exactly 100% the perfect position. I just, just want to demonstrate here that this is my position of my crown. And if I place a crown here, an implant should be there. Everything is okay. My treatment plan is ready. Everything is ready. All my team is on board. All my team understand how to perform this. And this is the moment to present. Key part is the moment when we are going to show to the patient what we think is the ideal treatment. And it's one of the key parts in the DSD workflow. Is what we call the second journey or the client journey. This should be in the second appointment. So first appointment, we digitalize the patient, take the photos, take the videos, STL and everything. Patient go home. We have what we call the interconsultancy where we make all this analysis, all the treatment planning, all the design, create the ideal sequence of treatment. And when everything is prepared, we are ready to bring the patient back. The patient is gonna be here for the second appointment and we start to present all this treatment that we prepare. Something that is very important with the 3D technology is this. Using this type of software, we can make many different treatment options. We know that a patient can have more than a one option. We can place four implants, six implants, eight implants, crowns over the tooth, bridges. So for one, one case, we can have 100,000 different treatments. So in software, we can do it. We can make simulations. We can make one extraction, bring the tooth back, open a stemma, close the stemma, prep the tooth, don't prep, place an implant, move the implant, put two, put three, put four. So after all this analysis, it's gonna be like a, a lab analysis, then we define, this is my ideal treatment. And this is, this is something that I always show and teach to my patients. I show to them, imagine, we treat your case, we analyze your case thousand, thousand, hundred times. And I always make a relation like this. Imagine that I'm a pilot. The pilots before go to fly in, in, in with the real uh, passengers, they need to practice thousands of hours. They need to go to simulators and fly and crash and crash and thousand hundred hours. And just after when they really know exactly, they learn perfectly is when we go uh, with, to fly with the real patients. So they practice in lab, so no problem, it's digital, they can crash, they are not killing people, and when they are really good enough, they can go live. It's exactly what we are doing with my patient. I wanna try it, I wanna extract, I wanna crash, I make a mess, I wanna move the jaw, I wanna move the bite, move the occlusion, and after 20 different options, I got my final situation. And everything in 3D, because I want to show to my patient in images. One image said more than thousands of words. So I prefer to show images, show videos, big screen, so the patient can understand very clear what is the treatment that we are offering. So we need to speak less and show more. That is a key part for case acceptance. Is the best, is this the best way to the patient understand what we are offering or why we think that is the best treatment for them? So we have a, a special sequence that we create here in this.
Dear participants, I believe uh, our speaker, Dr. Lukin de Arbeloa, is facing a technical issue, and I request you to kindly stay online so that he can connect back shortly. I hope you all have been doing well, and uh, if you have been attending all our sessions, I request you to kindly tell us and uh, let us know how you felt the sessions till now. It's the fifth day today from the biggest implant logy event. And uh, we would love to know your comments. We would love to uh, 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 read your good wishes, as well as we would love to know any reviews or feedbacks you would like to give as far as the uh, event is concerned. So if you have any comments, please do uh, message in the chat box and we can have this interaction session till the time uh, uh, Dr. Lukin joins back. I'm really sorry on his behalf and on behalf of Team Dentist Channel, you're facing a slight technical issue. Stay tuned with us. All right, participants, I am once again extremely sorry. I believe you're facing a technical issue. And uh, till the time Dr. Lukin connects to his presentation once again, Let's do this quick introductory session wherein you are telling us from which place you are joining us for this session from. If you're joining us from India, please tell us that you're joining us from India. If you're joining us from any other country, please tell us from which country you are joining. Dr. Lukin, please share your uh, screen. You are on the slide which says, show less, talk more, or something like that. Perfect. Sorry, Ray, I don't know what happens, but my yes. connection falls down. Okay, I think now you can see, right? So slide number 31. So we was in 31. this one, right? No, the one previously. Here. One more, so yeah, this one. Yeah, all right, perfect. Okay, uh, sorry guys for this technical issue. That's, you know, I love technology, but at the same time, sometimes I, I hate the technology, you know, there's always surprises. But uh, as I said, the, the, the goal here, or one of the tricks, is speak less and show more. We know that uh, one image or one video uh, can tell more than thousand or hundred of uh, images or uh, just to explain with words, images is more powerful. So this is a, one of the magic or one of the things that this develop is this, create this incredible emotional presentation that we want to present or, or make the patient understand why this presentation is important. So we have a, a strategy for this. We have a different journeys that we, the patient go through. It's a complete psychological and uh, very well uh, prepared presentation. We start with the emotional journey with the mock-up, then we present the problem, we show the solutions, then we talk about the financial. So this is a presentation that uh, if you scan, scan this QR code, you can download what this template that we build for uh, the people that use DSD. It's a, a template that is completely done following exactly these uh, journeys. So you can use it to increase your case acceptance. So one more time, scan your QR code and then you can download that. And then if everything went well, the magic moment is gonna come, case acceptance. The patient say, yes, doctor, I want to do exactly what you showed me in the screen. Or maybe the patient say no, like, well, oh, doctor, you know, I'm not sure that I want to do that. I, I, I don't see a, a big change. Perfect. I prefer a patient that say no at this moment that at the end is not going to be satisfied with my treatment because that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a patient that is going to be always against you. So it's a perfect moment to define. Is this a good patient for me or not? Is the, I can cover the expectation of my patient or not? Usually the case acceptance appears, opens here, appears here, the patient say yes, and we continue with the treatment. So after case acceptance, it's when we're going to really practice dentistry. All the initial part is documentation, the photos, the videos, explanation, design, and now it's where we're going, when we're going to do what we learn in the university. Now we're going to create all the devices to guide this treatment that we present to the patient. So in the case of uh, guided implantology, we are going to show, we're going to design all the guides that we need to place the implant to create the image loading. So look the difference. At the first moment, we didn't design the guides. 
because we don't know if the patient is going to say yes or no. That's why I said at the beginning that we place the implant in a um, real position, but it's not exactly defined the millimeters, the thickness of the implant, the brand of the implant. It's just like a, a, a initial uh, view. I, I think I can place well, for implants can be a little bit like here in premolars and molars, and that's what we're going to present to the patient. And if the patient said yes, it's when we're going to go deeply in the hard design. And this is in the implant cases, how we're going to create all the guides that we need. So we need to have a strategy and the strategy is that always start with the prosthesis. The prosthesis is guided by the face. And just after that is when we bring the bone. The bone is here and then we start to analyze. Prosthesis, implant, bone, and take all the decisions, soft tissue, hard tissue, and then we make all the deeply analysis. Then we can set exactly the thickness of the implant, the long, how long should be the implant, the perfect with angles and millimeters position of each one of the implants. Because at this stage, the patient said yes. So now we can invest more time on this. So we create all the devices. In this case, uh, we're we creating the a base guy, we are creating the implant guy, we are creating the image loading. In this case, it was upper and one implant lower. So we create all that devices. We are using different softwares, and this is the process. First, to the design the face, we transform it to the 3D. We place in the ideal position the upper and the lower, and then we bring the bone and place the implants. Everything is done. My guides are ready designed, so it's time to produce. So we are going to manufacture. Now uh, we can use the 3D printers. That was the first 3D printer that I saw in my whole life. That was an, an object from Stratasys. And at that moment, we was printing the implant guide with that uh, machine. That the case that I show you, we printed with that machine. But now the technology is the evolution with the technology. Now we're using this one. This is the 3D printer that you are using. It's the Formlab 3B. I saw that in the Congress, you have uh, two people from Formlabs. I know them very well, very good friends. And we are using, we are in very close contact because we are helping to develop new solutions. And now everything that we are printing in the DSD planning center, we are using the Formlab. In this case, you can see these guys, those guys are the ones that we are printed. And we're also printing the immediate loading with a tooth color resin, and then we can print the pink area we can bond. So now we have, there's a lot of different possibilities with the 3D technology. So this is the following the case. We create first the pin guide. The pin guide is the base that we're going to use to place the pins in the right position to fix the guide in the uh, maxillar of my patient. We print it. Then we have the guide for the implant placement. And as I said, for me, the key part is the immediate loading. Everything is connected by the pins, by the holes. So everything is gonna be exactly in the same position. And everything is going to come in a box. It's what we call the magic box. And not only the devices, it's going to come with a report about how to use it. When to use the first guy, the second guy, what implant, what measurement, all the detail is gonna be there. You just need to follow this report and use the guide that you need to use in each one of that moment. So all my devices are ready. I store you all my case. I saw my report. I'm ready and is the moment to perform. So as you see, usually we go what we learn or, or what the, 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 the teachers explain us in dentistry is how to perform. We are very good performing. We are very good prepping, placing implants. Uh, using the etching 20 seconds, then dry, don't dry too much. So all that concept we know very well. But the problem is, if we don't know all the previous steps, we're never going to have the option to go to the perform part. That's why we need to control very well the design, the plan, the percent, all the produce, all the guided device, and then do what we know more that is the perform. This is the clinical way how to perform the case. This case was done by Dr. Francis Coachman. He's, he's an implantologist, he's a Christian's brother. As you see, we place just uh, the first guide, we open the flat, place the first uh, guide, place the implant. Uh, I'm not implantologist, so for sure, if you're implantologist, you can 
uh, know more this part than me. And as I said, my part is after the implant placement. The guide is there, the implants are in the right position. Bring all the abutments, abutments in the perfect position, and then the magic moment for me. This is the capture of the image loading. As you see, the holes are exactly in the right position. So we can capture, and this is the result. This is the magic. One appointment, patient digitalization, second appointment, appointment we present, and in the third appointment, we can start to create work clinically. And this is the result just after the surgery. Can you see the smile is perfect, is in perfect relation with the face. The occlusion, it's already designed in digitally, so it's gonna be match it ideally and look the process the 2d designs we transform in a virtual simulation we use that lines to guide our 3d design like here we manufacture the immediate loading and look the result exactly the same and this case if we had some doubts what we do what we did was the quality control we just overlap after the immediate loading, we took a photo of the patient and we compare with the uh, planning. We scan the patient and we compare and we see that it was almost exactly in the right position. The patient was happy with the immediate loading. So you can see always following exactly the project. 2D frame, smile simulation, 3D design, immediate loading always following exactly the same design, the same process. So if I promise in this my simulation, the final outcome in the immediate loading should be exactly the same that I showed. We took a digital impression. In this case, we use the peak camera. And then we print the uh, teeth try. We did it just to confirm that everything was in the right position. We print completely. And when we, we screw into the patient, and then one more time we compare how was the try and the image loading and one more time match perfectly so that's mean we can go to the next step that is build the final prosthesis how we're going to build this final prosthesis we're going to use a complete monolithic material because we want to use the same file so the same file that we print in the previous step is the same file that now we're going to mill we scan this time we use the zirconia full complete monolithic zirconia we use some pink uh, in the gum area just ceramic this case was done by the technique andres acevedo the prosthesis technique and look this final monolithic result as i said the key part is the control we can control everything the before and after and the magic here you can see all the process in one slide. No surprise, everything under control. What I promise, I give it to my patient and in less time, less stress for the doctor and everything controlled by the digital. More photos, 3D design, look the quality control, the image loading, the teeth try and the final restoration all are exactly the same the only difference in this moment is the material of course we are changing for the resin in the first moment for a second resin that we print and finally it's a complete monolithic case this was the final result we did that case with the dr guillermo manzano he is part of the dc company too francis coachman and i was the, the one that placed the prosthesis the message of this case is if you know where you want to go it will be easier to get there that's the key that's why we need to start always with a smile design because not only for us it's just to cover our back because i want to present this to my patients so my patient need to understand what i have in my mind if the patient like it perfect we can continue and we have that plan that we just need to follow if the patient don't like we can modify we can make some change and then uh, present again. When the patient say yes, we can continue and then uh, create this final outcome. Uh, we have 10 more minutes, uh, right, Ruben? Can we continue? 
Yes, sir. Ten more minutes. Please continue. I cannot hear you. Okay. Ten more minutes. I want to show another case that is the evolution of this. This was one of the first cases that we did in uh, DSD with the, the implant guided solution. And then we make an evolution. And the evolution was this, the click guide. One of the main problem of cases like this is the pins. Let me go back here. You see the pins is these areas that are the common parts that we use to place the pins of each one of the prosthesis. The problem is that every time that you take out the pins, take out the prosthesis and place the other one, then the, uh, the, it's, it's not perfect. We have some distortion, then don't fit correctly. We cannot find the holes. So in the surgery is not so easy. That's why the evolution was the click guide. The name is because it's like a puzzle. Can you see we have four different devices here and all have something in common. You see these balls? So this one match perfectly over the blue one. The green one match perfectly over the blue one and the purple one match perfectly over the blue one. That's mean that the first one is what we call the base guide. I will show you clinically how to do it. One more time, if you want to see the uh, patient digitalization DSD protocol, just scan this QR code and you can go straight to the PDF that you can study to learn more about these photos and, and video protocol. Exactly the same as the previous patient. patient everything is start by the face. We analyze the face. We did a 2D design. The 2D, the 2D we transform in a 3D. In the 3D, we place the crowns in the ideal perfect position. Then we present to the patient. The patient said yes, and then we create the devices. What devices? This one, the click guide devices. This is the digitally designed, the base guide and bone reduction guide, the multifunctional guide, the implant guide, and the image loading. And we print it. All these materials are printed. All the guides and image loading. The only thing different is in the implant guide that you use metal rings that are bonded in the holes. So everything is printed. Look here, all the devices. In this case, we have one, two, three, four devices that we are using for this case. And the first step is to place the base guide in the right position. How we know if it's there or we need to rotate a little bit to the left or to the right or it's completely in the right position in the upper jaw or not, the best way to do it is like this. We use the multifunctional guide, the patient bite, and then we can see that it's in the right position and then we place all the uh, pins. So that's why we call the base guide. And we use this guide too as a bone reduction guide. So everything that is from this blue area to the pink area, that's mean that we need to make a cut, a bone reduction and osteotomy following this line. That's why the name is base and bone reduction. If the, if the case they don't need an osteotomy, so that's mean that the reach is gonna be exactly at the same level of the guide. In this case, we use it first as a base and then we did all the osteotomy. Francis did it with a first handling and then we do it with a hand piece to regularize all the surface. And after that, we use the implant guide. How? Just take out the first one and place the second one. And you see, it's like a puzzle. The blue area is gonna be there always until the final part of the surgery. It's gonna be there, we plug or click the implant guide and we start to place all the implants. As you see, it's easier, it's faster, it's more predictable and you have no, you don't have that distortions. Another problem with the guided implantology is that we plan everything in the computer, everything is perfect and when we go to the surgery, sometimes the bone is not perfect and we have some things that we need to do hands-free. For example, the density of the bone is not exactly what we expect. So that's mean that we need to go hands-free. That's why we have this multifunctional guide. We call in this name because at the beginning, we use it to define the ideal position of the base. And now we're using to 
guide us, to give us a reference about where the final two will be and where is the rich position. So if we have some problem, for example, imagine that in this implant, the bone is not correct, so I, can, I need to take out my green guide. I can just place this multifunctional, I go hands-free completely, and knowing that this is the vestibular area, this is the palatal area, I know that here I can be in the middle. So it's gonna be a very nice reference. Then we can use to confirm after the guided implant placement, we can confirm if everything in the right position. And if we are going to take a traditional or analog implant impression, we can use that as a tray. So we just need to place all the silicone inside, then unscrew the abutments and take that part, the multifunctional guide, and it's gonna be ready for the lab. The last part is the immediate loading. One more time, the base is still there. We took out the orange part and now place the purple one. This is the clinical process. And one more time for me, the magic is this. Look, the holes that are exactly in the right position. So we just need now to use some composite to fix the abutments to the prosthesis, to the immediate loading. Then we take out all the pins we unscrew the prosthesis, we polish, we clean, we cut these external areas. Here we cut the pins and then we place the prosthesis. Here a summary of the full process. As you can see, all the step by step, open the flap, place the base, the multifunctional and the splint, place the base guide, then we did the osteotomy, multifunctional uh, guide, the osteotomy is here, implant guide, place the implants, place all the abutments, multifunctional just to confirm everything is correct, so we can continue, place the immediate loading, put all the abutment that you need to capture the prosthesis, use some composite, fix the abutments to the prosthesis, take it out, at the same time, they are doing the suture where the lab is preparing, polishing, cleaning, doing the pink acrylic or whatever is need. And we have this final situation in just a few moments. So as you see, one of the main advantages is uh, the predictability, the case acceptance, because we are presenting in an easy way to the patient and everything is going to be more controlled. We use natural algorithm uh, galleries. So the tooth is gonna look like a real tooth in the shape and texture. The occlusion is gonna be digitally controlled. So it's only benefits the use of the guided dentistry. So Ruben, I'm right with the time. I have one question here. How many appointments need to complete underrival implants to the patient? That's the pain of the case. If a full arch or not, that's the pain of your workflow. If you have, if you are doing your uh, complete workflow, you can have the first appointment, uh, create all the design and present the mock-up in the first appointment. In the second appointment, you can start to uh, do the surgery. So the surgery is gonna be one appointment. First appointment, patient digitalization. Second appointment, presentation third appointment surgery, fourth appointment impression, fifth appointment is the final prosthesis replacement. So in five appointment, you can do a full all on X case. I have like a three more cases that I explain very well the appointment, but in this case, I have no, no time to present this. Thank you, Jagadish, for the question. Uh, Ruben, if you have any other question, uh, I'm completely open. Yes, sir. All right. Are we done with your presentation? Yes, I am on time, right? All right. Yeah, you are perfect on time. You have another five minutes of your time, sir, if you wish to continue. Okay. And I have uh, which software required for DSD Smile Design? Rahul, uh, well, this is uh, is not an easy question because we use many softwares. There are software that you use just for the 2D Smile Design then there's another software that we use for the implant planning and then we use another software for the manufacturing of the devices. 
So that depends on the case, that depends on the workload, that depends on the equipment that you have. But we usually in the planning head center have more than uh, six, 10 software that we combine depending on the cases. Thank you, Dr. Lukin. Uh, before we move to the next question, uh, friends, uh, once again, a warm welcome to you. Please post all your questions with regards to digital smile design, with regards to anything that comes under the digital smile design domain. We have a wonderful speaker, the master himself. He would love to ask all your answer to all your questions. Please feel free to post all your questions. Before we move ahead to the question and answer session, friends, there's a short presentation that I would like to give you. And for that, I request Dr. Lukin to kindly share his uh, screen share for a moment. Thank you. Okay, give me one second. I just want to say that uh, I think I, I was thinking many people always ask me, even I received some message in my in my Instagram about when is when I can give a course there in India. And the truth is that until now I have nothing scheduled in India, but I have something close that is going to be in Dubai in October. So if you want to be there or you want more information, uh, one more time, there is a QR code that you can scan and you can receive all the information. Uh, here you have my Instagram, so feel free to contact me and always respond the messages. Anything related to this topic, anything related to smile design, anything related to uh, DSD, please feel free to uh, interact with me. Ruben, uh, now I'm stopping to sharing, so it's Thank you, doctor. yours. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you so much to you, Dr. Lukin, for coming and gracing. Can I see the digital impression slide of the document? Okay, that's um, what slide? The digital impression slide. Oh, uh, the pic camera means maybe? I'm not really sure. I'll request the, uh, the person who's asked me the question, Dr. Maybe this one, let me share one second my screen. So I think this is the one that he's asking for or she's asking for. Maybe, yes, sir. Till that time, maybe I can move to the next question. Can I see, okay, can beginners use digital design? This is the last, can you repeat, sorry, Ruben? Yeah, the next question was, can beginners use digital design? Yes, you can start from now. You, if you have a smartphone and you have patience, you can start to work in the digital smile design workflow. If you don't have an internal scanner, just take a traditional impression, send to your lab. Your lab will digitalize your impression, take the right photos, take the right videos, and then you can start to work in the digital smile design world. That's why I shared with you this, uh, the QR code about the photo protocol, because it's one of the key part of the process. It's how to take the perfect photo, the perfect videos, and after that is the STL. Thank you very much. So next question, how can you make an impression after implant placement without closing the flap as we are using a click guide? Okay, that's the pen. Remember that you're, you don't need to open a flap in the, all the cases. So you can close the flat and then take the impression or you can just take the impression because the information that you want for an image loading is the position of the implants. Then the internal part of the tissue you can modify. So that's the pain of the case. And uh, if you open the flat, you need to close. If you want to copy exactly the reach, if you, didn't op you did not open the flat, you can take directly the impression. You have these very different options. Uh, that's the pain if you're going to take in the analog way. That's the pain if you're going to use a digital way. So it's a, a complete, it's up about what do you think more comfortable doing. All right. Thank you, doctor. Dr. Bala, here's your screen. Sorry? Uh, the presentation is now open for Dr. Bala, the one he asked a question for. The presentation is open. He wants yes, to see. He was asking one question. What is the question? I cannot see it. Yes, just a second. Can or yeah, can I see the digital impression slide? This one. Yeah, this one, yes. I can play if you can if you want to see it better. There's different way. There's not the only way today to make a digital impression. You can use your intraoral scanner or 
You can take analog impression and then scan, or you can use this device that they call it, the name is the PIC camera. There are many options. In this particular case, I use the uh, PIC camera. All right, Dr. Bala, I hope your question was answered. We move to the last two questions. Can we use DSD for laminate Vino celebrity Hollywood smile designing? Yes, you can, you can use smile design for whatever you want. It, that's the key part because if you know that you want a, a Hollywood celebrity smile design, we just need to know exactly what you want. And if we have that tool in our gallery, we can use it. If not, you can share with us a photo and we can copy very well the same that we can see in that photo. Thank you, doctor. I think this is the last question. Is the DSD course that's taking place in Dubai an online course? No, until now it's going to be an in-person course in, in October. It's uh, a normal case. I want to fly to Dubai, the Villa Fortuny Training Center. It's a beautiful place. It's a DSD clinic where they implement all the DSD protocols inside the clinic. So it's a, it's a very good uh, real opportunity because it's not only the concept. So you can see how a real DSD clinic uh, workflow works.